our planet is constantly being reshaped by different forces, like wind and water. But the most powerful force that alters the Earth's surface is the movement of tectonic plates. What are tectonic plates? Tectonic plates are large, solid pieces of Earth's lithosphere that move in different directions on top of a hotter flowing layer called the asthenosphere. There are seven major tectonic plates on Earth today, along with some minor ones. Some plates, like the North American plate, are large and contain an entire continent. Others, like the Cocos Plate, are small and contain only oceanic crust. Which tectonic plate are you standing on right now? As you know, there are seven continents on Earth. Can you spot two continents that look like they could fit together? If you look carefully at the shapes of South America and Africa, you'll notice that they look like pieces of a puzzle that fit together. In the early 1900s, this puzzle-like fit led scientist Alfred Wegener to put forward the theory that the continents were once part of one large landmass called Pangaea. This means that South America and Africa were once neighbors. Wegener's theory, called continental drift, explained why identical animal fossils like that of the Mesosaurus were found on coastlines separated by vast oceans. The Mesosaurus was too small to swim across the Atlantic. The continental drift theory could also explain the matching of large geological features across continents. For example, the North American Appalachian Mountains line up with mountains in Scotland and Scandinavia. Leading geologists questioned Wegener's continental drift theory because the theory didn't explain why the continents moved. It was only the ocean floor explorations of the early 1960s that continental drift theory was verified. These explorations led to the discovery of magma oozing up in the middle of underwater mountain chains, known as mid-ocean ridges, to create new ocean floor. This process was called seafloor spreading. Seafloor spreading occurs when tectonic plates move away from each other and create a gap in the Earth's crust. Magma rises up and fills this gap, creating new oceanic crust. The age of the ocean floor is an important piece of evidence that supports seafloor spreading. New crust is found at the mid-ocean ridges and gets progressively older as it moves away from both sides of the ridge. Another piece of evidence that supports seafloor spreading is magnetic reversal information. Magnetic reversal is the process in which Earth's magnetic north and south poles flip places. Magma contains small magnetic grains that act like compasses. As this magma hardens into crust during seafloor spreading, the magnetic grains light up, permanently recording the Earth's current magnetic field. This magnetic information is carried with the ocean crust. About every half million years, Earth's magnetic field changes. When this happens, the tiny magnetic grains point in the opposite direction. Magnetic reversal recorded in the crust is found to be identical on both sides of the mid-ocean ridges, thereby supporting seafloor spreading. Seafloor spreading, in turn, was the first positive proof that there was a force strong enough to move continents. This was just the thing needed to verify Wegener's theory of continental drift. The continental drift theory and seafloor spreading, in addition to the discovery that earthquakes and volcanoes occur most frequently at mid-ocean ridges and specific areas around the world, led to the development of a new unifying theory called the plate tectonics theory. The plate tectonics theory explains how Earth works. Heat from Earth's interior creates convection currents, which move the lithospheric plates around in different directions at different speeds. 
The place where two or more plates meet is called a plate boundary. What do you think happens at plate boundaries? Depending on how the plates move relative to one another, different crustal features such as rift valleys, volcanoes, and trenches are formed. Plate boundaries can be classified into three groups depending on how they move relative to one another. A divergent boundary is the place where two tectonic plates move away or spread apart from one another. The majority of divergent boundaries are located at mid-ocean ridges where seafloor spreading takes place and new crust is formed. If seafloor spreading results in the formation of new crust, why isn't Earth getting bigger? At the same time new crust forms, older oceanic crust gets pushed down into the asthenosphere, creating deep ocean trenches. The heat in the asthenosphere causes the rocks of the ocean plate to melt. By melting away some of the oceanic plate, the Earth balances out the new crust being formed by the seafloor spreading. But not all divergent boundaries are found in the ocean. When two continental plates move apart, a fault develops on the Earth's crust. Faults are cracks in the Earth's crust that tilt slightly outward from one another. As the plates continue to separate, the land between the faults can sink down to form a rift valley. Sometimes magma can seep up and fill the cracks in a rift valley, forming a new continental crust. The best example of this is the Great Rift Valley in Africa. Fault block mountains can also form at divergent boundaries. These sharp, jagged mountains form when a large amount of tension is created on Earth's crust as the plates pull apart. This tension breaks the crust apart into large blocks that drop down relative to one another. The Sierra Mountains in California are a great example of fault block mountains. Convergent boundary is a place where two tectonic plates move toward or push against each other. What do you think happens when two plates push against each other? Two continental plates converge. They can squeeze together and force the crust upward. This leads to the formation of folded mountains. Folded mountains are just like rumples in a rug being pushed together. The highest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas, is a result of the Indian plate colliding head-on with the Eurasian plate. What do you think might happen when a continental plate pushes against an oceanic plate? Oceanic crust is denser than continental crust. Therefore, when an oceanic plate converges with a continental plate, the denser oceanic plate slides beneath the lighter continental plate into the asthenosphere. This region is called a subduction zone. In a subduction zone, the tectonic force that pushes the plates together is so strong that it causes the plunging oceanic plate to pull some of the continental plate down with it, forming a trench or crack in the ocean floor. Subduction zones are also where most of the world's volcanoes form. Why do you think volcanoes form along subduction zones? As the oceanic crust sinks downward toward the asthenosphere, the temperature increases and the edge of the oceanic plate melts to form magma. The magma can eventually erupt through Earth's crust to form volcanoes. Subduction zones can be found on all sides of the Pacific plate, where plates are diving below other plates and melting into hot magma. In this area, called the Ring of Fire, Magma erupts through volcanoes, and numerous earthquakes occur. The devastating 1985 Mexico City earthquake was a result of the subduction zone created by the Cocos Plate sliding beneath the North American Plate. The earthquake was felt as far away as Los Angeles and Houston. Trenches, like the Marianas Trench, which is the deepest point on the planet, is part of a subduction zone formed where two oceanic plates meet. When two oceanic plates meet, the older plate usually slides under the younger plate because it's denser, thus creating a subduction zone. At transform boundaries, instead of moving toward or away from each other, 
Tectonic plates slide past one another. This kind of boundary results in a large fault. Faults associated with a transform boundary are called strike slip or lateral faults. The San Andreas Fault in California is an example of a transform boundary, where the Pacific Plate slides past the North American Plate. Because tectonic plates are not smooth, a lot of jolting and gnashing occurs while the plates slide past one another, creating earthquakes. Plate tectonics has led to a sweeping change in our understanding of Earth and the forces that shape it. Today, we learned that continental drift, seafloor spreading, and the location of most earthquakes and volcanoes led to the formation of the theory of plate tectonics. The plate tectonics theory explains how Earth's lithosphere is divided into tectonic plates that move in different directions on top of Earth's asthenosphere. Crustal features are formed at the boundaries where plates meet. Plate boundaries are classified according to how two plates move relative to one another. A divergent boundary is a place where two tectonic plates pull away from each other. Features such as mid-ocean ridges, rift valleys, and fault block mountains are created at divergent boundaries. A convergent boundary is a place where two tectonic plates push against or move toward one another. Trenches, folded mountains, subduction zones, and volcanoes are features associated with convergent boundaries. A transform boundary is a place where two tectonic plates slide past one another. Strike slip or lateral faults are created and earthquakes often occur as each plate grinds past each other. This is our Earth's fascinating story of plates colliding, oceans opening and closing, mountain chains looping across our planet, violent earthquakes and fiery volcanoes. It truly is a puzzling planet we live on.